The, uh, the genesis of the memorial uh, began with Mel Hancock. And Mel talked to Max about leaving a memory of him in the community after he had passed. Not only of him, but of his whole family. And to do something very tastefully that uh, once Max departed this world, uh, there would be some physical remembrance of, of he and his family. At the time, Mel was uh, working uh, in the, uh, I guess, institutional giving uh, area at Mountain State University and came up with the idea of uh, a memorial bell tower. He had known Max Lewin for several years. Max, of course, uh, lost a significant portion of his family in the Holocaust. Mel was just one of those people that just had ideas and uh, he thought, you know, wouldn't a bell tower look nice? And so he started thinking about Max and some of the stories that Max, because they, they talked when Mel would stop in his store about the Holocaust. And so Mel started uh, talking with him about, um, you know, trying to do some kind of memorial for uh, the Holocaust and, and for his family. Mel then worked with Paul Walker with the L.A. Gates Company and came up with a design that became known as the Bell Tower. As part of that Bell Tower, there was going to be uh, a mechanical electronic bell uh, chiming from the top of the facility. There was going to be an elevator inside that would provide students, faculty, and staff with uh, transport from the third floor up to the fourth floor and on the outside of that we were going to arrange for a beautiful dedication of a plaque. It was going to be in bronze, it was going to be cast and it was going to include the name of him and his family. Not only was Mel, um, you know, had a lot of good ideas, he was very artistic. And so lots of times when he was, uh, was trying to get someone to get the idea of it, he would, he would make a little model of it. And he actually made a little model of what the bell tower would look like. And if you go drive down South Canal Street, it's pretty much like the mock-up Mel had. And then he also did like a um, mock-up uh, newspaper, you know, announcing that uh, Max Lewin had decided to donate this money. And um, so, you know, I, I think that it, I think that Max was pretty much on board almost from the first time when Mel showed him the mock-up. But, uh, you know, it took a pretty good while for him to finally make the decision. The difficulty Max had was in approving the design in terms of how it would look and the words, what the plaque would say. And thirdly, Max was extremely concerned that after I would no longer be there, and had left the institution, that the following administration would come in and remove the plaque. So Max had a lot of hang-ups in having this done, but it was something that he wanted to do. And, and that kind of tells you who Max is. I really want to do this, but how do we do it? What are all the other implications? What if, what if, what if? And so we began laying it out, uh, working with Mel and working with Paul Walker. Uh, we came up with a design and we came up with language and we came up with a year that was going to be on the plaque. A year has passed now and Max still has not signed off on the casting of the plaque. It was going to come out of a foundry in Florida, I believe. It was very important to Max that we found a Jewish foundry to do the work. And I don't know how, but I believe he came up with the name of this company in Florida that would actually do the work. And so now we have the concept, we have the provider, and yet we don't have a finalized design. And so we worked on language. Uh, we used the faculty uh, at the university from the English department. We showed it to people all around and Max still wasn't satisfied. So 
he made the recommendation that we go see Dan Page at the newspaper. Dan was the editor at the time. Rob Hammond was publisher, I believe. And we went down and on a large white piece of butcher block paper, the type of paper that you wrap meat in, we had the words uh, written out so that Max could see what they would look like and Dan could give us his opinion as to the language. And it really wasn't until Dan Page kind of gave his imprimatur that what was there was okay, that Max felt comfortable going forth. So now we've got the words approved, we've got the design approved. Big question is how is it going to be affixed to the building? So we had to demonstrate to Max that we were going to use long extended bolts that would screw into the back of the plaque that would then be concreted into the masonry that would also be attached with uh, an adhesive to the back of the masonry to make sure that the plaque could not be removed without great difficulty. And again, it was a journey uh, that I traveled with Max to try to get that plaque uh, finally erected onto the bell tower.